hovering over Polly Boris. We arrest and bind him now in the name of Jesus Christ. We arrest all the demons. We arrest all the powers. We arrest every principality. We arrest every authority that is contrary to the will of God. We arrest it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We come again as true Satan. We come again as true Satan. We come again as true now in the name of Jesus. And we establish the power, the will, the authority of God. The kingdom of God has come today in Father Boys in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we welcome you. 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 Master, we welcome you. Master, we welcome you. Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. Lift up your hands and say, we welcome you, Jehovah. We welcome you, Jesus. Lift up both of your hands, students. Lift up both of your two hands and speak to the Lord, telling we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Master. We welcome you, King of Glory. We welcome you, Jehovah. We welcome you, Master. We welcome you this morning. In this place, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Somebody shout unto the Lord. Shout with a loud voice, hallelujah. that have bewildered his life for many years broke. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to shout and the powers of the devil controlling your life will break and the chains will fall. Hallelujah. Amen. Say hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you Jesus. You may all sit down. Before you sit, greet the person next to you for me. You are only an extension of my heart. Tell them the preacher welcomes you this morning. The preacher welcomes you this morning in the house of God. And then you may take your seat. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. Are we good this side? Are we good? We agreed that no one talks, nobody walks. Are we still in agreement? I insist on that and if I see you do this, you will have disobeyed me and I will chase you out. I am here by the knowledge of the authority of the school. And therefore, I exercise that full authority and you will not play with me. You will have to sit and hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. We are not here to play games, and therefore you will have to sit and hear God speaking to your soul. As students and even as teachers, we are here for one thing, that God may, that God may address our needs, that God may come into our situations, that the Lord may come to us and meet with us at the point of our need. That is the reason we are here. We are not time wasters. We just did not lack what to do. Then we came to Kuala. No. We came that God may meet with us at a central location. Praise the Lord. At a central place. This is the reason we are here. So we are going to obey the voice of God. And you are going to also believe in the man of God and you will prosper. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I trust that you have your Bibles, you have your notebook and you have a pen. Lift up your Bible if you have yours. Lift up your Bibles. Everybody, lift up your Bible. If you have a Bible with you, lift it up. Lift it up, lift it up and say, this is my Bible. I believe it. Everything that it says is the breath of God for my life. So I will read it. I will believe it. And I will be prospered in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those that did not come with their script, with their Bibles, I should stop calling you a Christian. Because you have that book, because it is
is the hook that defines you. And when you come to the house of God and you don't carry it, then I do not know why you have it in school in the first place. Praise the Lord. And teacher, I insist always, when students are coming for see you, for any gathering that is Christian, they must carry their Bible. And not book and a pen. They should be taught to do these things from school. School is supposed to teach us everything. You must be able to carry your Bible. Remember always to carry your Bible whenever you're going to a church. Praise the Lord. That is the reason you have that book in the school. In fact, it is one of the things that are usually checked when you are being cleared to enter for one. The Bible is usually a requirement for Christian students. Therefore, you cannot afford to have it and keep it somewhere in your locker or somewhere in your box in the dorm. You must be able to use it when need comes. It is your sword. You must draw it and use it against the enemy when we come to the house of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are not really in a hurry. I realize we are in a school. I know that. I don't know what is going to happen. Maybe someone needs to move this thing further from, from where it is to somewhere here. But I think to be closer to that, the speaker. Someone to move it somewhere further here. My name is Moses. I am born again. We have come visiting you from Mombasa. We belong to a church called Jesus Celebration Center in Mombasa. And it's always our privilege and pleasure to be in your school. Praise the Lord. The last time I was at Kuala Boys must have been several years back. Actually, the last time I was here, there was a student that there was the, the CU chairman. He is even done with his university. I met him somewhere in Kilifi, and he's done with his university. He was a student here. I was preaching here that day. And he went, did his exams and passed and went to Kenyatta University and he's done and he's out and I am coming back here after that time. Praise the Lord. So it's been a while, eh? It's really been quite some time. I thank God so much. Together with me uh, is a team. Brethren, just rise up wherever you are. Brother Maina, Brother, Brother, Brother Musay, just rise up and wave to the church. Sister Gloria, just wave to the church. Sister Gloria is just a young sister like, like you. She just did her exams last year and passed very well. She's joining, to, waiting to join university, probably this year. So at the end of the year, she will be joining university. So we are here as a team. And we are coming to you because we love you. We are not pastors. We are simply your elder brothers that have come to share with you. I am not a pastor. No, I'm not a pastor. None of them that you have seen is a pastor. No, we are not pastors. We are simply brothers in the church. And we love to preach the gospel to students. Praise the Lord. Right there in the church, we belong to a group called Schools and Colleges Ministry. We drive our name from our purpose. Our purpose is to reach out to you in schools and in colleges, sharing with you in the love of Christ, and telling you that Jesus loves you. You may sit down, brethren. God bless you. And the man that is on the, on the camera is Brother James. We are not doing that for anything. We are simply doing that. We are, we are not... We, we are not doing that for any other reason. We are capturing those pictures and we put them on YouTube. And it is watched all over the world. At no cost. You just simply log into YouTube page and you will be able to watch us. And that is the reason he's doing what he's doing. And we bless the Lord for that. Praise Jesus. And we are very serious about it. That is the reason you hear me talking very sternly to you. I love you. It's not that I am harsh on you. I love you. And I know the, the schemes of the devil. The devil allows the children of God to come into the house. Then he begins to mess them up. Someone please take care of my microphone. He begins to mess them up while they are in the house of God. You begin to sleep. You begin to talk around. You begin to walk around. And you're wasting precious time. And you're not hearing what God is saying. And while you are doing that, that is the time the word of God that was meant for your life comes. And it passes you by. So I need you to be aware of the schemes of the devil. And stop him. The Bible says that resist the devil and he will flee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Teacher, I also always insist on students wearing smartly. More smartly than they wear on Monday morning when they come to the house of God. If the school requires you to be on stockings, you should be on stockings all the way up. With your shirt and well tucked. If you are supposed to be in a tie, be in a tie. Especially on Sunday when you come to the house of God. Let us show God respect. God will respect us back. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. We have a thing this morning and the thing was only sent to us in the form of a scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9. That is what we received through a text message. And I read it and I was always giggling whenever I was reading it. And I knew that what a wonderful choice of scripture by students. Where the Bible says that all oh, you young men rejoice and find pleasure in everything that you do. Do everything that your heart leads you to do. The Bible gives you, the Bible almost sounds like it is giving you freedom to do anything that you may want to do. But I want to tell you that the word of God will surprise you. The word of God will always contrary go directly against what you think. Because it is, it is not canon. The word of God is spiritual. And it is designed only for the spirit to understand. I hear somebody talking and I say, nobody talks. Who is that speaking? Was your neighbor talking? If your neighbor talks, you lift up your hands and I will know your neighbor is talking. I will come and pick him or pick her and send her out. The word of God will never allow or agree with what your mind thinks. You may think that the word of God is agreeing with you, but the word of God will always be contrary to your mind. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go straight into the word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. As we open that portion of scripture, it was very interesting for me. When I came into school, into your school, I made an observation. I am always observant when I, when I go somewhere that I don't usually go to. Because it is always likely possible that you will learn something new that you did not know. When you go to a place, you look around, you will see something that is unusual. That, that, that when you add to your life, will add value to the quality of the life that you live. And I couldn't help but to notice the mission of the school. It is written below. The mission of Kuali Boys is also. The mission of Kuali Boys is written all over and I, I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't help but to read it and to read it again. It says to produce an all-round student with exemplary qualities and outstanding abilities for self-reliance and national development. Power. Powerful statement. Powerful statement that must have been that must have been thought through by a wise man. And it was written down yes, as the school mission, as the mission that one boys are set to achieve in your life. Praise the Lord. It is therefore important for us to realize that the school, the structure of the school, has been designed. To make you an all-round person with exemplary qualities and abilities for self-reliance and for national development. That is the mission of this school. And that also happens to the mission of the word of God in your life. Is to make you a holistic person for self-reliance. Sio mtu wabai badaya shule. Utakao ukijililia jililia, ukisema na serikali itusaidi. That kasuba we will kill it. After hearing the word of God, and after being in school for four years, you are supposed to be a self-reliant person with qualities that are able to keep you strong and moving forward. Economically, spiritually, health-wise, and in every area, you being in school, you are supposed to be strong after being in school and after receiving the word of God, such as which I am preaching this morning. So I was so impressed by the mission of the school to produce an all-round student with exemplary qualities for self-reliance and for national development. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to realize that the structures we are sitting in are put up by the government so that the government may prepare you to become a national developer. In Africa, unfortunately, we think that we still must be helped by people from somewhere else. But I want to break that notion. The man that you're seeing on the camera, this young man that you're seeing here, Brother James. Brother James, 
and can speak confidently on his behalf. The way you see him, you look at him, sometimes you might think, ah, he's just one of the John D. St. Harris. But I tell you, economically, he's a very strong person. Economically, he's a very strong person. Very strong person. A very, very strong person. He can even sponsor all of you in school. He can pay all your school fees. Him alone. He is economically very strong. And we are, we are, why am I telling you this? I am telling you this because I need you to be him when you grow up, finally. I need you to be a self-reliant, a person that is able to stand and overcome all the challenges that come your way. The things that nobody has achieved in your family. You will be the first person to achieve them in your family. Lift up your hands and say amen to that. Amen. Lift up your voice and say amen to that. Amen. You will be the first person to overcome the challenges that have overcome all your family members. Amen. You young girls, nobody is allowed to play around with your life. Your life is meant for greatness. God has chosen you for greatness. God has called you at a tender age for greatness. You must not allow your life to be misused by people that are passing by. People that may not even know where they are going. You must be able to stand your, your ground and to achieve the purposes of God for your life. Say amen to that young girl. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go into the reading of the word right now. And we will bless the Lord for that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Where do we find Ecclesiastes? Is it in the New or the Old Testament? My Bible doesn't seem to have Ecclesiastes. Where is it? It is after what? After Proverbs. You say it is after Proverbs? Okay, I can see Proverbs in my book. Oh, yeah, great. And then Ecclesiastes, I found it. So, in my Bible, had it all along. I didn't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to read from verse 9. That is the verse that we have. The Bible says that uh, rejoice, all you young men, in your youth. Beautiful. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Praise the Lord. I have deliberately read verse 10 also to address the teachers and the people that are not students here. I thank God for his word. His word addresses all. I know when we came up with a theme, we thought the theme is only for the students. The word that we will preach here is not just for the students. It is for us all, including me, the speaker. Praise the Lord. Youth is a stage in life meant by God for enjoyment. Hallelujah. I repeat, youth is a stage in life that God gives us deliberately to enjoy. I will be explaining that as we go back. So, that is the reason why the Bible is telling you that rejoice in your youth be strong in your youth. Enjoy everything that comes away during your youth time. Do the leadings of your heart. Follow what your heart leads you to do while you are a youth. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your vigor while you are a youth. Do everything that makes you feel good and makes you feel happy while you are a youth. That sounds easy, right? Sounds nice and leading, permitting. It sounds easy. The Bible says that all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. Have you ever read that portion of scripture? All things are permitted, but not all things bring profit. Not all the things that are permitted bring us profit. Young men, when the boys say hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the Lord, I hear the voices of men. 
Praise God, that is that sounds nice. I said youth is a stage in life that God has given you to enjoy. But I want us to look at a scripture before we, we, we go further into that in the book of uh, 1 Timothy. Open 1 Timothy and keep your fingers on, on, the, on the theme scripture. Keep your fingers there on the theme scripture. Let's open 1 Timothy verse chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. As you open, I, I emphasize, I reiterate that youth is a stage in life given to us by the Lord deliberately to enjoy. So anybody that is denied enjoyment while you are a youth, the devil is destroying your life. Do I have any youth here that is sickly? Somebody that is always sick. You are always in and out of school because you have to go for your medication. A person like that, the devil is playing into your hands. And you need to resist him before he destroys your life. Any problem that comes during your youth is demonic, orchestrated from hell to stop your life from moving forward. 2 Timothy chapter 6, have you found it? Verse 17, what does the Bible say? We're going to do this together, so we're going to read it together. One, two, three, let's go. Did I say what? Which one are you reading? Second Timothy or First Timothy? Five. Yes, First Timothy, verse six, chapter six, verse seventeen. Let's go. Have you found it? Yes. Let's go together. One, two, three. Yes. Command those who are rich, who are rich in their present, in this present age, not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to do what? All things for our what? For our, I know you have different versions of Bibles, so but they might be speaking differently, but they mean the same thing. God gives us all things to do what? To enjoy. But particularly, he gives us the youth stage to enjoy. God gives us our youth times to enjoy. I will be explaining what it means by to enjoy. We have a lot of things that come to us. And as you read that portion of scripture, you think probably that God is permitting you to do whatever it is that comes to your heart to do. But that is not what God is saying. You need to be in the spirit to hear what God is saying in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Happiness that, that we generate from the pleasures that we do here and there, they are called fleeting happiness. They are called fleeting happiness. Have you seen the mist? Have you ever, this side of Kuala, I know you sometimes experience cold seasons. Sometimes you might see in the morning something like, like, like smoke, moshi. You, you want to, to, to reach out and touch it, but it's not there. You can see it, but you can't touch it. Attention on me, please. Those that are coming in, just come in and sit. Those that are in here, you don't pay attention to the people coming in. Pay attention to me. Have you ever seen mist? You want to touch it, but you can't touch it. You want to reach out to just touch it. You can even walk in it, but you can't touch it. Praise the Lord. So it is a fleeting thing. It is something that is passing by. So happiness that we generate from these little pleasures, they are fleeting pleasures. They are fleeting happiness. They pass by. But as youth, we must put our faith in the Lord. We must put our faith in God, who provides for us richly for our enjoyment. God gives us everything that we need to enjoy. And to pursue true happiness as a youth. To pursue true happiness as a youth. I'm going to subdivide that portion of scripture into four trajectories, into four paths, into four courses. So that by the end of the fourth one, you will understand what this scripture is talking about. So let's go back to it. Having read 1 Timothy, 
God gives us everything to enjoy. Move back to Ecclesiastes now. Are you there? I told you to put your finger there so, so that you don't have a problem opening it again like I did. God gives us everything that he gives us for our enjoyment. You need to enjoy your youth. Let us read that scripture again. Now I want us to read it for understanding. I will read it as you follow. Rejoice, O oh, young man, in your youth. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Stop there. I look up. Follow your heart. Pursue life while you are young. Weird people do weird things and they are outstanding in the society. The people that we consider weird, they are people who do extraordinary things and they stand out in the society and we eventually call them celebrities. For you to become a celeb, you must do something that is out of the ordinary. You must do something that not everybody else is doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. For you to be a singer that is renowned the world over, you must sing beyond what others are doing. For you to be a great speaker, you must do the things that others are not doing. Follow your heart. Pursue life. While you are young, the Lord has put in your possession a lot of things that you can do. When the Bible says that follow your heart, your heart is where God has deposited everything that you need for this life. You need to try singing while you are young. You need to try soccer while you are young. You need to try arts while you are young. You need to try all these extracurricular activities while you are young. This is what the Bible means by to follow your heart. Why? Because it is in your heart that God has deposited the treasures of your life. So when the Bible says follow your heart, the Bible is not allowing you to follow the wrong things that your mind is thinking. It is in your heart that God has deposited greatness that is meant to come out of your life. And you need to pursue after your heart. You need to follow your heart. When your heart tells you that I can sing, you need to stand and sing. Praise the Lord. When you are good in maths in school, pursue mathematics with all of your heart. When you realize you are good in soccer, during vacations, when schools are closed, walk into Mandari College in Mombasa and go tell them, I can play football. I need you to include me in the club, football. Please give me a chance to try. And when you try, and they see you dribble past the first player, the second player, the third player, the club will entrench you. You following what? Your heart. And whatever.